I'm Bias Trades here, and today this video is going to be about how I analyze my stock data. Most of this is manually tracked um, data. I will be moving, well, I am moving to more automated stuff, um, and I'll do a tutorial about that when I get better at it, and I have evolved my knowledge in that area, because I really think that would be an important video for everyone, because <laughs> right now I would love a video <laughs> like that, summing it all up. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that in the future for sure. But this is just uh, for now, and hopefully this is good enough. So let's get into a setup example. So this is for my bag holder setup. And these are just some things I thought, you know, if, if you're starting to track your data, what should you be looking at? These are just some kind of basic things. Um, I use win percentages and loss percentages for some stuff. And then I've been doing uh, quantile ranges as well. So that can be useful. Um, I don't have a way of simulating this yet. That would be my, my next kind of target to do that. Um, but for now, I think it's a very easy visual way to see, you know, if something's working or not. Um, so yeah, for example, we've got these entries up here. Um, these are for the win percentages for these entries. We've got the best get the fuck out. Um, these are like how often they happen. So I track what one's the best for that stock. Um, and you know, 51% of the time, if it breaks the nine plus 27 EMA for this setup, it, you know, it's better to get out than not. Um, then we move on to like high institutional ownership, uh, inside ownership, SSR and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, this has really helped me see, you know, a lot of those things people say are super scary or you, you shouldn't short. Most of the time they're fine. I think it's just being aware that they can cause more uncomfortable situations. So you have to be ready for that kind of stuff. So we can see, um, I've also color coded everything. So if it's below 70%, it equals red, uh, because ideally I want to be aiming for stuff only above 70% win rate because, you know, I don't execute perfectly. So I want the setup to be pretty highly, uh, like a high win rate. And then I can, you know, even if I do a bit worse, it's still not bad. Right. So we can see uh, high institutional ownership, 33% win rate with this. Um, and then funnily enough, uh, in this quantile range, it's got a 91% win rate. So, you know, that's something I always look at. ATMs, for them at the moment, that's a bit more complicated. I've summed it down pretty much to just uh, if they have an ATM or warrant or shelf offering in the current price range. Um, and we can see 84% of the time, if they have an ATM or warrant, it's, you know, it's, it's good. It's got a good win rate. But if they... Both don't have anything, it's 70%, so it just highlights red. Um, this, I'm planning to do more in detail, uh, like statistics about it, but I'm still kind of making that spreadsheet and seeing how I want it. Um, this is just how common trapping is and the win percentage for that. Um, afternoon grind, same thing. Uh, pre to open, now this is the uh, pre-market high to open and how much is extended downwards. This is for winning and this is for losses. So we can see um, on average, uh, these are all using mediums, by the way. I really recommend uh, median when you're doing averages for stocks because for your data, there's so many, you know, couple outliers that are very extreme. They really mess up your average data. So definitely use median. Uh, but for the medium uh, win, we can see it normally extends 14% from the uh, pre-market high to open uh, downwards. And for a loss, it's only about 10%. So ideally, I want to be seeing around 14, 15%, something like that, right? And then for quantile ranges, um, this is the uh, the quantile number for that range, so 25 million. And then I make the win rate of, if it's under 25 million, what's the win rate? 100% for under 25 million, uh, 80 million, 87%. And then we do the difference between those and, you know, the float and prices uh, continues. We can see this setup doesn't work very well for 5 to $10 stocks. Um, and plus $10 stocks, I haven't had really any data for that at the moment. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then also we have entries here. Um, this is something I really recommend doing a medium uh, average entry. So for the daily, normally they happen at 1019. Daily, it doesn't always apply because it's more just about when it gets to that daily level. But for example, pre-market high or uh, VWAP, these can be very useful to see like, you know, when's are the best times um, you would normally get to enter. So this is really useful. I definitely recommend it. Then we do monthly averages. So this is just so I can see changes. Um, in my data. So, you know, for example, if this month VWAP is heavily favored, but overall, uh, we could see overall no VWAP is still one of those. But, you know, for example, if it was high of day, then I'm knowing like something's definitely different here if there's a lot of high of days. 
Um, just do market cap, average, pre-gain, float, all the normal stuff, just so I can see what is expected right now if something is um, doing way more than my expectations of averages or if it's you know still playing in line and I think the setup is still good. Um, this one has been really useful as well, average breakdown time, so I can just see um you know when is the perfect time for me to be waiting until the average for a breakdown so if i'm taking a short at 9 30 i know i don't really have the odds in my favor for it breaking down straight away for this setup anyway so i normally want to wait for at least around 10 to, to 10 to 10 30 for that kind of breakdown area uh to get my entries in and all that kind of stuff uh next this is a different type but this is feedback um kind of statistics for me I think for me, uh, visually seeing something uh, being beneficial or not beneficial for me is way easier than just me saying, oh, I've kind of recognized this pattern. I think I shouldn't do this, right? So normally I want to have it in clear numbers, um, even if it's as simple as, have, did you follow uh, your rules? Yes or no? And then I can see um, with different stuff. So let's, okay, let's go emotional. Uh, if I'm emotional, I've got a 58% chance of losing on that day of the day being red. Uh, and if I'm not, I have a 6% chance of it being a losing day. So you can still see, obviously some days uh, I'm emotional, but the trades don't work. So I still lose. But you know, if I'm getting emotional on that day, um, definitely I, I'm way more likely to lose on that day and have a red day. Um, for risk not being followed, same thing, 55%. Like, you know, if I don't follow it, then I'm probably going to have a red day. It's a coin toss, really. And then if I do, it's only about a 15% chance. Um, if I don't follow my plan, 52 or 53 pretty much, and 22% chance um, that I, I won't have a red day if I do. So these are just really useful things. The things you could, you know, vaguely say, hey, if you follow your rules, you'll probably have a green day. Um, and yeah, that's good. But for me, I want to see it visually and, and know that's like kind of for certain to some extent, right? Um, like see the numbers behind it. So I definitely recommend this. If you have a hard time sticking to things, sometimes visually seeing it and tracking it really does help uh, your like conviction in those kind of things. Um, so definitely recommend this. It's helped me. And that's it for this video. If you want any other topics, leave them in the comments below. My next video is probably going to be on risk management um, or some other Excel tables. Um, and I'll try and do two videos uh, this week or next week. So just stay tuned for those. And thank you very much.